One of the best ways to actually understand what a report does is, is to build one, to actually see how it's built and then read it. So the first part of this lecture is actually to build a report, a basic tabular report, and the second part is actually going to be to interpret it, to tell us what it means and what we think about it. There are many ways to actually build reports, right? There are many starting points, rather. There are two um, in particular that I often use. What I like to do is use the create new function on the home page and click report. I could also click on report and then click new report. So what I'm going to do is actually go back to the home page, click create new and click report. The first thing to note is that there are many, many types of reports. As mentioned, Salesforce has many objects, right? And if you are in an organization that uses many custom objects and custom fields, the list could go on and on. What we're going to do is actually create a very simple report called the Contacts and Accounts Report. I select my report and then I go down to the bottom and click Create. The first thing I do when I get into a report is I save it. And this one I'm just going to call Test. And I'm going to save that in my personal custom folder. What are the options that I have here? I have my personal custom folder, which means only I am able to see it. Unfiled public reports means that anyone is able to see it in the organization. And Patla's folder, I don't want to put anything in her folder. I'm going to just put it in mine and I'm going to click save and run report. I then I'm going to click customize to go back because what I did was I ran the report. So my first step is to save it. My second step is to go into the filters section. Each report has three sections, the filter section, the preview section, and the field section. I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. So I save my report. My next step is to make sure that I can see all accounts and that my created date equals all time. And that will pull all the information that Salesforce has. So first step, save. Second step, make sure that I can see everything. And third step, remove all columns and then save. What this does is it creates a very clean report for me to look at. Okay, so what we saw were a lot of things at the bottom. We're in the contacts and accounts, so we can figure out information about them. One of the things that I'd want to know is who are my contacts, right? What are their first and last names? Notice that I can drag and drop information. So I can drag the last name in and I can take it out. So what I'm going to do is drag it in and drop it. And if I wanted to just be quick, I could also double click someone's uh, a field and that will automatically take it into Salesforce. I can also reorder these um, as well. I want to see the first name and I also want to see the account that the person is part of. So I'm going to look for account name drag it and drop it. So we have the first name, the last name, and the account name. Now this is a report that I would like to actually contact this person. So I'm going to type in email and I can see that I can drag over an email address. And I can also try to think very specifically about maybe there's a state that they're in. So we could say state or province right mailing state of province that gives us some some more information and I could even perhaps get their phone number now notice that I'm pulling information for every single contact that we have in Salesforce because I haven't filtered this information right so let's say for example you only wanted people from with us from a specific account right from a specific account. So what we're going to do is we have account name. And let's say I only wanted people from Grand Hotels. Now I have no idea um, how many contacts we have in Grand Hotels and I want to find that information out. So what I'm going to do is actually copy the account name. I'm going to drag this account name and drop it into the filter. And the filter gives us different options. Equals to, not equals to, less than, greater than, less or equals, greater or equals, contains, does not contain, and starts with. What I'm going to do is actually say equals to, and I'm going to actually paste in Grand Hotels. When I click OK, what do you think is going to happen? 
Well, if you think that I'm only going to see contacts related to Grand Hotels, absolutely. So let's click OK and see what happens. Well, we actually have three contacts related to Grand Hotels and Resorts, and they're in Chicago, Michigan, and California. Let's say I only wanted to see, just for argument's sake, those that are in Michigan. So I only want to see John Bond. I'm going to drag this up. Remember, I could also put it up here. And what I'm going to say is mailing state or province equals, and I'm going to just say MI for Michigan right here, and click OK. Notice that I only pull up John Bond. What I'm going to do is, let's say I wanted to have everyone but Michigan, so everyone excluding Michigan, I could say mailing state or province not equal to Michigan and click OK. And notice that James Bond is no longer part of this. So there's a relationship between the filters and the previews. And if I wanted to get rid of this, I could easily click Remove. Right. Wonderful. So what I'm going to do now is talk a little bit about this created date, right? So let's actually type in created date as a field and drag this in and see if we have any pieces of information outside. So as you'll notice, I only have 50 records and I'm sure this Salesforce has more than 50 records. So if I click run report, I'll just do that again. If I click run report, I can see that I have many, many, many records. In fact, 465. And so what I want to do is filter by certain things so that I can pull this information. What I could also do is click hide details and that would summarize all the information. Or I could click show details and that would pull this out. So what I have here is if I click customize and I take out the created date, what I could then do is say to myself, all right, let's find another way to summarize this information. So let's say I put type, account type, and I'm going to put it right in here. And we have different account types. And let's say I only wanted to see the account types that had information in them. What I could do is drag this up and say account type not equal to blank. And what's going to happen is anything that does not have an account type in will, will, not, will disappear, right? So let's see what that looks like. So I can only see information that has, only see fields that has information in it. And if I click Run Report and I click Hide Details, I have 22 records. But notice what happens when I click Clear. All right. Okay. So what I want to do here is show you that we are in a tabular report type as well. Okay. And what I could do with this information is I could also filter it by time. So notice that I had the date in there. And what I could do is filter it by current fiscal quarter. I could filter it by current and previous fiscal quarter. And if I run this report, the numbers should change. All right. So this is just a basic, basic report. We have people's phone numbers. We have people's email addresses. We have the type of customer they are. And this is across the organization, and we could actually go ahead and make sure that we can see this only by certain states. So let's say I only wanted to see those in California. Um, this would help me just play with this information and answer some basic questions. In the next lectures, I'm actually going to be diving deeper into more complex reports. Um, but this is just a great overview and a starting point. I hope you've enjoyed this lecture.